Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope you are doing very well. Ramadan Kareem to all of you and welcome to the new semester and new training session series from the e-learning department. Today, we have a very powerful topic that will hit the some of the standards, some of the things which is beyond the any uh, using any platform. If you want to go to use any platform as an instructor to design a course or as a administrator to design a course for the students, you need to know about the standards. So today's lecture is e-learning content design and development. And we will discuss also about the National e-learning center standards. Myself, Rima Shaheen, and I'm from the e Department of the E-Learning in the IT. And let's start today's topic. First come first, the first, what is basically a meaning of the National E-Learning Center. Before going towards to explain about this, I want to discuss some of the points that many services have been transformed to e-services, which is an umbrella term for services. On the internet, e-learning is one of the most important e-services offered. It is most used in training and higher education courses. We all know that at the same time, the quality of education is aimed for all the higher education institute, especially we are to today we are going to talk about the upward. Quality learning is a goal for any online education program, so this quality must be equivalent to the quality delivered via on ground courses and the programs in any institute of higher education. Now the question is, what is uh, basically National E-Learning Center? National E-Learning Center for e-learning that is, applies information, education, and technologies to improve the capacity of the educational and training process in all form, also control quality. The center has financially and, and administrative independent. So basically, this organization is established in an independent entity by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia Council of Ministers and the decision number was 35 in 1439 Hijri. It aims to enhance the trust in e-learning and providing lifelong equal access to e-learning and leading sustainability innovation and e-learning in order to achieve the trusted online learning for all. So the basic purpose of this center is implementation of uh, e-learning standards and e-learning opportunities, innovations for all in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, universities, institutions, and the higher education as well. Now the question is, what is basically the vision and the mission and the values of this center? If I'm going to talk about what is basically the goals of this uh, organization, so basically goals enhance the trust in, in e-learning and the online learning, facilitating the equal, equal access to relevant lifelong online learning and leading sustainable innovation in education through online learning. And if we are going to talk some about objectives, of the e-learning, uh, National e-learning center that are, they want to ensure the recognition of all form of online learning, ensure the quality of online learning, ensure equal access to all over the kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the online learning and improve the quality in the online learning and improve efficiency, provide adaptive all learning opportunities that are relevant to the individual learning needs and also lead digital transformation in education. That is a, one of the very important point and a very important objective of the, this organization that they want to be implement in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the digital transformation in the higher education 
very fast and very in an equal level. Okay. Now let's move towards to know. Okay, here's the some of the board of the directors, and you can see uh, there's a, a different board of e-learning international advertisory. Here's a one a very interesting thing that is the success partners. Success partners means the they are connected with the National E-Learning Center. There's many other universities and many other business, uh, you can say different um, uh, institutes are connected with it. And But one of uh, the most important things are university, design university is also connected with it. And we are a success partner with National E-Learning Center. And other pointed and the very important thing is which will be help us to further uh, understanding what we are going to talk about today. There is a, there is a two companies you can say there's a two companies are here. We are going to talk about these companies and why I will explain. I want to elaborate a little bit more about this National E-Learning Center to giving you a word clear information and a very uh, powerful things which is already implemented. So they have uh, some of the services and uh, there's the three services. The first one is licensing. So they provide basically institutes and programs license for institutes which provides e-learning and training programs based on approved licensing regulations. The aim is to build e-learning and training practices in accordance with the international best practices with high efficiency and effectiveness. The second thing, they are giving us services of research and consultations. RNC aims at conducting assessment and developmental studies. In addition, it offers the consolations in the field of e-learning to enhance the trust, quality, effectiveness in all private and government institutions that offer e-learning. Moreover, it provides a database for the e-learning resources, measuring beneficiaries, satisfaction, and assessments of the present uh, studies and research in accordance with the highest standards. The third thing that is a really important, that is a training and qualification. NELC uh, qualifies and train all the institutions and individuals providing e-learning and training program on international and local best practices in field of the need that National E-Learning Center standards and strategies goals. So these are the three basic services with this organization. And as we talk about this, some of the training and the certification, uh, these certifications are paid certification, but any of the institute uh, can uh, use these kind of the certification for the faculty members or if any individuals wants to just uh, want to go and just enroll in these kind of the professional certification, they can do it. Okay, in all the history of the National E-Learning e Center, one is the very important thing. And the actual, I just giving you a one a line, one line information about this center. Basically, they set up a standards. They set up a standards for the e-learning, electronic learning, distance learning, to just implement, this, uh, implement different strategies to make the education online standardized. If we are talking about the standards, so we have to follow some of the rules. Before going to work to actually the details of these two companies, that is the online learning custodian and the quality matters. These are using the worldwide and the famous one, and also our success partner of the National E-Learning Center. Okay, 
we are uh, just i just want to explain about what is the olc olc is a basically a leading professional organization that is devoted to advancing quality online learning by providing professional development olc is a collaborative co community of higher education leaders and innovators dedicated to advance quality digital teaching and learning experience designed to reach and engage the moral learner anyone anywhere and any time basically that is a slogan for the olc they are going to provide and engage the modern learner anyone anywhere and any time we are going to talk about the second organization that is a qm and the quality matters quality matters is one of the most used quality standards all over the world Today, we are going to talk about in detail and what is basically quality matter, how many standards we do have, how we are able to implement in our course. And these all are the very important things. But before going toward this, we have to know basically what is actually the purpose and what is actually the quality matters. Quality matters is nationally recognized faculty driven pre review process used to ensure the quality of online and blended courses design. Keep in mind, we are not just talking about the online, we are also talking about the some of the standards for the grounded courses, which will help us to just create the standards for the blended learning as well. QM standards were involved and revised based on research and established standards in the field of instructional design and online learning. When we are talking some of the standards, some of the things which is connected with the course design, so we are going to talk about the um, course design rubrics standards. What is basically a rubric? Rubric is basically a set of instruction which is connected with the system to evaluate the course. Basically, we are giving us some set of rules and instructions to the system. For example, we are using the Blackboard or any other e-learning system or any other LMS system. We have to give them uh, some of the rubrics and some of uh, the set of instructions to actually explain the system what actually we want from this course and how we set the standards of it. But setting these kind of the rubrics before we have to know what is actually standards. A set of eight journal standards and the 42 specific review standards used to evaluate the design of online and blended learning course. In this quality matters, we are going to know about the basically the eight journal standards and we have the sub uh, standards that is you can just calculate that is the 42 specific standards the rubric has a scoring system used by the review team to determine whether a course meets the standards and the essential standards the three point specific review standard must be met during the review and overall score of 85 percent of the point possible are required for a course to attain the qm certification when you just create a course and set a standards your course must meet 85 percent standards just find just got the points like this and it will be just gain the 85 percent of the points and then they will be able to get the qm certification Okay, now the question is who will set these kind of instructions and who will set these kind of standards? Your members using this rubrics include the individual faculty and the instructional designers. Instructional designers are designers who basically design the course or the strategies and standards for the organization. And even the individual faculty member can also set the standards and rubrics for their courses. The four-year aggregated colleges and universities basically doing this and community colleges doing this. So these all are the 
you can just say that in a one a higher education or institute we can say this is covering the all the all the terms and all the like faculty the instructional designer the colleges universities community colleges so these kind of all people can do this rubric and set the standards for the courses okay now the question is what are the basically eight journal standards for the which is basically giving by the QM and the quality matters organization to the all over the world. So we just list up these all eight standards here. If I just, I want to explain that is the course overview and introduction. That one is the first one. Then learning objectives, assessment and measurements, structural material, learning activities and learning interaction, course technology, learner support, accessibility and usability. And here is a one note for the accessibility and usability that they are saying, meeting the QM accessibility standard does not guarantee or imply that the specific country, federal, state, or local accessibility regulations are met. Please consult with an accessibility specialist to ensure that the accessibility regulations are met. They are saying we are not guaranteeing you, but we just design a, a standards for the accessibility and it will be meet according to your country or state. If you want to be just redesign or something, you have to consult with the accessibility specialist. Okay, now let's move to what you know about the first standard, and that is a course overview and introduction. I already explained we do have a different 42 specific uh, sub, you can say, standards within one main standard. This is the course overview and introduction is the main first standard, and we have nine points with it. So you can see there is a just numbering here, which will represent the basically the worth of this substandard. So you have to meet the most important uh, one is the like there is a one number, two number, and the three number. Three number means that you have to meet the specific, and this is a very important and insert essential for adding in your course this standard and then the second number and the first number so i'm going to represent you basically these all nine points visually and we will discuss what is actually the meaning of all these policies and standards and how you will be able to understand it hello everyone this short video aims to introduce the first quality matter standard, which focuses on the overall design of the course. The overall design of the course should be explained to the learners at the beginning of the course. In a way, the course overview and introduction set the tone for the course, let learners know what to expect, and provide guidance to the learners. There are nine substandards included under standard one. Some components of a standard are essential, which means that in order for a course to pass QM reviews and receive accreditation, they must be met. Each of these essential standards is worth three points. Other standards are labeled as either very important or important. These were two or one points respectively, and it is acceptable so you can see there here is a different differentiate the standards there are the nine standards but they are giving us some of the points to make it a essential very important and important so this is a basically hierarchy and then you have to focus on the more focus on the essential points and then you have to focus on the very important and then you move toward the important points well not to me every single component as long as altogether the total overall score received reaches 84 points out of 99. The first two components of this standard are essential. The third, fourth, and fifth are very important, while the last four fall within the important category. 1.1 and 1.2 explain 
that at the beginning of the course, instructors are encouraged to provide an overview of the course to let learners know what to expect. Oftentimes, faculty may post the syllabus, a written welcome message, or a welcome video on the Start Here button in the Learning Management System to convey this information. The overview may include how to get started, what to do first, where to find several course components, the schedule of activities and assignments, learning tasks, and available resources. In addition, learners should be introduced to the purpose and the structure of the course by explaining the course schedule, the delivery method, whether it is an online, blended, or hybrid course, the modes of communication, types of learning activities, and how learning will be assessed. A well-written syllabus contains all these and some additional elements. 1.3 standard says that etiquette expectations in the classroom and for online discussions, email, and other forms of communication should be clearly stated to set expectations for appropriate communications for the entire semester. Providing a link to the institution's student handbook or code of conduct is suggested, or the relevant statements can be included in the syllabus. The recommended syllabus language can also be found in the Indiana State Online Blackboard Template course, to which you may easily get access if you contact an instructional designer. 1.4 standard explains that up-to-date course and institutional policies need to be clearly stated because students are expected to comply with them. Faculty can either include these policies in the syllabus or a link to them can be provided within the course. Policies may detail student conduct, academic integrity, late submission of assignments, incomplete grades, withdrawals, confidentiality, student grievance procedures, and other instructor established policies. 1.5 says that instructors are encouraged to clarify the minimum technology requirements for the course that students will use throughout the course. Technology may include hardware, software, subscriptions, and plugins. Providing clear instructions about obtaining, installing, and using these technologies are also preferred. Again, Recommendations for policy language are available in the syllabus template posted in the Indiana State Online Blackboard template course mentioned earlier. 1.6 says that the prerequisite knowledge or competencies are clearly stated within the course in documents such as the syllabus or in documents linked to the course. According to 1.7, the minimum technical skills expected of the learner are clearly stated. These explain general as well as course specific technical skills learner must have in order to succeed in the course. Examples include using the learning management system, which is Blackboard, sending and receiving emails with attachments, creating files in commonly used word processing, spreadsheet, and presentation programs, copying and pasting, downloading and installing software. 1.A asks for a self-introduction by the instructor, which is appropriate and available online. The introduction creates a sense of professional connection between the instructor and the learners and depicts the instructor as an approachable person. The introduction should include the instructor's name, title, field of expertise, past experiences with teaching online courses, teaching philosophy, email address, phone number, time of availability or office hours, and preferred communication methods, which could be by email, phone, or even Skype video conferencing. 1.9 says that learners should introduce themselves to the class at the beginning of the course to create a welcoming environment and a sense of community where students can reach out to others. Learners should be explained where, how, when, and in what format they need to provide their introduction. These may occur by utilizing the discussion board, wikis, or blogs, where text, audio files, short videos, or a combination of such elements can be uploaded. 
providing students with guiding questions to be answered in the introduction is a good idea. Instructors may role model the activity by posting their own introduction for students to see before students are asked to complete the activity. And what are the key points in standard one? Okay, if you are thinking that is not relevant to you and it's not connected with you i just want to switch and i want to show up you one thing which is a very important and why these standards are important and if you are thinking this is just for the information and just giving a journal information no this is very important for the instructors to know the standards and also it is implemented already in the blackboard system I'm going to open and show you up why you need to understand these standards. Because you are going to implement it. So let me show you up where these standards are going to implement. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to switch to the, basically the blackboard. Let me share the screen. Okay, hope it's visible to all of you. After the login of the lms.designu.edu.sa, that is basically our platform of the blackboard. After just selecting your course, you will, going to find a one new thing here that is click here start here Bye -bye. and you will see a one complete document here and if i just want to translate to english okay for example so this is a one complete form already appeared here and this all the course content, the, all the points, each and everything is just connected with these kind of the standards. Why you do need to understand this because you are going to apply on this form. And if you don't know actually the, what is the meaning of the standards and how you are going to fulfill this uh, application form. So you have to just, uh, before you have to know that actually about the standards and you will be able to fill this form very easily. We had a one session with the Mr. Shakil Ahmed. He explained about this uh, form very well. So I, in the end of the session, I will share the recording of that session as well. Just um, the purpose to showing you up this form is basically to know you that these all uh, information is not just a uh, general information. You are going to implement uh, practically. So you have to focus on these standards to understand, and then you will be able to build a, basically a well standard strategies for the, your course design. Now switch toward our presentation. Review. And now we are going to move toward the second one that is the learning objectives. Again, we do have a five sub standards and this is the second one that is learning objectives and we have the five different standards and you can see there's the, all the points gets the three that means th these all points are essentials to implement. Let's have a visual representation what is basically the meaning of these standards and how do we will implement it. Hello everyone. This short video aims to introduce the second quality matter standard. The second quality matter standard focuses on learning objectives, which construct in a way the DNA or the foundation of the course, because the subsequent elements are built upon the stated learning objectives. What are learning objectives? Learning objectives, also called learning outcomes or competencies, describe what learners will be able to do upon successful completion of the course. Carefully written learning objectives are extremely important because they motivate students. They lead to developing meaningful activities and purposeful assessments that are aligned to the overall goals of the course, and they provide evidence that the objectives are met. There are five essential elements in the second standard. 2.1 states 
that the course learning objectives should describe measurable outcomes. Measurable learning objectives, as stated moments ago, describe what students will learn and be able to do upon successful completion of the course. How will the instructor know that the students meet the expectations? A measurable objective is observable, includes an action verb, and describes a mastery level. The Bloom's taxonomy can be a useful resource in developing measurable learning objectives. Here's an example from the Quality Matters rubric. Upon completion of the course, learners will be able to demonstrate the correct use of personal protective equipment. 2.2 says that the module or unit learning objectives describe outcomes that are measurable and consistent with the course level objectives. Course objectives are broken down into learning objectives at the module and unit level, which are more specific than the course objectives and describe specific skills, knowledge, or competencies that will be mastered during the module or unit. But overall, they all contribute to the achievement of the course objectives. Alignment is an essential concept that quality matters emphasizes. In a sense, alignment means that the learning objectives, activities, materials, technologies, and assessments match up. Instructors teach what is in the learning objectives, students learn what the instructors set out, and instructors accurately assess what students are learning. In addition, learning activities, materials, and technology should also be utilized to support the achievement of the learning objectives. Hence, all components effectively and purposefully work together to reach the desired outcomes. 2.3 states that all learning objectives and competencies are stated clearly and written from the learner's perspective. Learning objectives should be easily understandable even for non-native speakers and written without unnecessary complex language or jargon so that students can understand what learning outcomes are expected of them. Learning objectives should be explained to students not only in the course introduction or syllabus, but in each module or unit too. 2.4 states that the relationship between learning objectives or competencies and course activities is clearly stated. Instead of just listing the learning objectives in the syllabus, the instructor can use a numbering system to show how course activities and assignments correspond to the learning objectives. Instructors then can list and explain in a narrative form the learning objectives in the assignment description. 2.5 says that the learning objectives or competencies are suited to the level of the course. This means that the expected learning outcomes are appropriate for the type and the level of the course. For example, a lower level course may include lower level learning objectives containing action verbs such as list, explain, or classify, which may align with assessments that require students to partake in a discussion or simulation, create a concept map or poster, or take a multiple choice true-false test. Upper level courses may expect students to analyze, create, or evaluate ideas, concepts, or materials, for which the allied assessments may ask students to present a business plan, write a research paper, create a portfolio, or complete a case study. Lastly, let's review the key. So it's explaining about the learning outcomes and learning objectives uh, that is a very important for the students to understand about the lower level or, or the upper level what they are going to do and uh, what they have to uh, just learn an outcome so you have to uh, follow the rules to just whenever you want to make to when complete learning object now the next one is assessment and measurements so assessment and measurements also have the five points and here is the first three points are the essentials and the two points are the very important so these all are the considerable so now we are going to know about what is actually the meaning of these five points and in the main uh, standard that is assessment and measurements hello everyone this brief video introduces 
the third quality matter standard that centers on assessments and measurements. Assessments are designed to evaluate learner progress in achieving the learning objectives or mastering the competencies. Assessments need to be designed and implemented in a manner that corresponds to the course learning objectives or competencies. Through assessments, the instructor can measure learners' mastery while learners can track their own progress throughout the course. Of the five components of this standard, the first three are essential, while the fourth and fifth fall within the very important category. 3.1 focuses on the need to design assessments that measure the stated learning objectives or competencies. Appropriate assessments are valuable tools in confirming or measuring learner mastery. As a reminder, module learning objectives need to be consistent with the course level objectives. The video introducing the second quality matter standard explains that alignment between learning objectives and assessments is critical. So you can see here, these all standards are interconnected. If we are talking about the standard two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but these are interconnected with each other as well. If you are designing a one complete course with the standards and strategies, you have to focus all the eight points standards and you have to just implement all these things because this these all are interlinked and these are very important and some points are essential, very important. And here you have to just focus on it because this will be connected with the next standard. All in the quality matter standards. In short, course and module level assessments need to measure what was set out in the learning objectives. Students should be able to successfully complete the types of assessments if they have met the objectives stated in the course materials and activities. For example, a composition can measure writing skills, a multiple choice quiz verifies vocabulary knowledge, and a case study demonstrates critical thinking skills. Alignment fails if the objective is to write a persuasive essay, but alignment fails if the objective is to write a persuasive essay, but the assessment is a multiple choice test. It may be a good idea to follow a backwards design where the learning objectives are constructed first, then purposeful assessment items are created. And finally, the teaching learning activities are developed. 3.2 says that the course grading policy must be clearly stated. A clear written statement explains how the course grades are calculated and what points, percentages, or weights are used for each component. The relationships between points, percentages, weights, and letter grades are explained. In addition, Instructor's policy on late submissions is clearly defined. 3.3 explains that the learners are provided with specific, complete, and descriptive evaluation criteria for their work and participation, which are tied to the course grading policy and are stated upfront at the beginning of the course. Students need to know how a grade on an assignment or activity will be calculated and what the instructor's expectations are. Again, the criteria used to evaluate the learner's performance should align with the course objectives or competencies. 3.4 describes that the selected assessment instruments are sequenced, varied, and suited to the work being assessed. Multiple assessment strategies may include utilizing interviews, journals, portfolios, demonstrations, performance tasks, labs, simulations, and exhibits, besides the widely used traditional assessments, such as multiple choice, true, false, or matching test items. Appropriate assessments measure the right level of skills and knowledge. Assessments should be varied in order to promote multiple ways for learners to demonstrate mastery and to accommodate diverse learning styles. During sequencing, Assessment should promote the learning process and build on previously mastered knowledge and skills. Assessments also need to be paced properly 
to give learners adequate time to complete the work in a thoughtful manner. Avoid administering all assessments during the last weeks. Instead, space them out as the material is being covered. You should also avoid utilizing only multiple choice tests as it will not meet the standard. Requiring students to demonstrate knowledge or skills incorporated in an assessment that has not been covered in the course yet would also not meet the standards. Lastly, it does not meet the standards when discussion boards are assessed on the basis of frequency or word count instead of on criteria related to the course objectives or competencies. 3.5 asks that the course provides learners with several opportunities to track their learning progress. Learning is more effective if learners receive frequent, substantive, and timely feedback. Feedback may come from the instructor, from assignments and assessment that have a feedback feature built into them, or even from other learners. Self-check quizzes, interactive games, simulations, other activities, and practice opportunities with feedback features are appropriate and may even allow multiple attempts. Regarding writing assignments, it may be a good idea to require a first draft for which the instructor provides suggestions for improvement and the students can submit their final improved paper later. It may be effective to utilize peer reviews and critiques, sample answers or answer keys. In addition, portfolios, journals, reflection papers that require students to self-evaluate their work could be purposeful assessments. Sharing exemplary essays for learners to review is another way to model expectations. It is now time to review what Quality Matters Standard 3 promotes. As so basically in the Standard 3, we just uh, follow up all the standards, which is just connected with the assessment and measurement. So these all are very important to under understand with the example it's represented already that how you will be able to create your standards for the assessments to creating for the different kind of the quizzes the multiple choices and why do you need to implement these all things and these standards must be have some of the feedback which explaining about the self um, the different um, explanatory feedback uh, practices you can implement so so these all are the important and hope it's very really well explained to you to about the standard three uh, that is assessment and measurement. So let's move toward the fourth one that is the instructional materials. So let's have a look how many standards we do have here. We do have five sub standards in it as well. That is the instructional materials. So uh, again, I just explain about again and again about this these points because to understand these points is very important. If the point is three, that means that is a essential. And if there is a two, it's mean uh, it's very really important. And if there is one, it's mean it's important. So here is we have the two points are uh, mentioned here. That is a three and two. So that's mean it's considerable all the five points. So let's have a look what is actually the meaning of these standards and how we will be able to implement it within our course. Hello everyone, this is the fourth video in the Quality Matters series. It aims to explore the fourth Quality Matters standard, which turns attention to instructional materials. Instructional materials enable learners to achieve stated learning objectives or competencies. Hence, the focus of this standard is on supporting the course objectives and competencies through the proper use of instructional materials. So you can see this standard is also interconnected with the standard two that was the uh, objective and uh, e -lear uh, sorry learning objective. So uh, you have to focus on this. The, all the standards are not just you can you are not going to skip one and you are going to implement another one. No, or these all are interconnected and you have to follow all the standard essential parts and very important parts to implement in your course. Now this standard, the fourth one, is uh, as 
mentioned, this is related to the instructional uh, uh, materials. So this is, uh, you can consider that is uh, implemented by the instructional designers. As I already mentioned, uh, there is a different uh, faculty member can implement instructional designer, the aggregation uh, department and the universities communities. So these all are important for the all. Uh, one of the one, if you are saying that from the administration level to faculty, uh, all the uh, terminologies are important uh, to implement and understand for the one complete institute. The first two components are essential in the standard. The third, fourth, and fifth are very important, while the sixth component falls within the important category. Next, let's look into some details. 4.1 says that the instructional material should contribute to the achievement of the stated course and module or unit learning objectives, which again refers to the importance of the alignment process introduced in the second standard. Hence, instructional material should be aligned with the learning objectives and integrated effectively with the tools, assessments, and activities selected for the course. Instructional materials may include, but are not limited to, textbooks, publisher or instructor-created resources, multimedia, and websites. 4.2 describes that both the purpose of the instructional materials and how the materials are to be used for learning activities should be clearly explained. It simply means that learners should be provided with an explanation of how the instructional materials, resources, technologies, and learning activities are used in the course, and how each will help students achieve the learning objectives. 4.3 explains that all instructional materials need to be cited appropriately. The citation requirement applies to instructor-created materials, publisher materials, textbooks, images, graphic materials, tables, videos, audios, websites, or other forms of multimedia. Citations role model the practices learners are expected to follow when documenting references. At so here uh, they are giving you uh, some of the citation standards that is uh, we have the uh, different uh, citation uh, standards they are explaining that if the students are giving a reference uh, in their assessment or any quiz or any assignments so they have to follow these kind of the standards as well uh, if they want to reference uh, one research paper or something so we do have uh, these uh, uh, five different standards to implement or just uh, grab the reference of any um, article any research paper so you have to follow these all things so it must be familiar with the students as well that what is actually the meaning how you will decide uh, reference so this is very important for the students as well minimum a citation includes the author's name date of publication title and url or source online courses follow different regulations than face-to-face -face courses regarding copyright issues for example Uploading an entire article, book, or video into the learning management system will violate copyright regulations. Instead, if possible, a link to such resources can be posted. Understanding and applying copyright in online educational environments is very important. It is encouraged to locate relevant resources and become informed of the best practices. If you follow the embedded link, you will find a quality lesson developed by Lisa Hughes related to this topic. And here it's talking about the copyrights and plagiarism things. Uh, this is also uh, already implemented in the Blackboard and um, uh, in the last session already announced that we are going to uh, just implement the extended version of the Blackboard Ultra. So we do have uh, there is a lot of features uh, to uh, new features uh, to uh, doing uh, different things. So there's a, one of the feature that is a safe assign and we will uh, have a one complete 
session on it and how do you be able to uh, just implement that features to avoid the copyright so this is also one of the standards uh, that you have to implement in the learning management system and so our university already implemented it and you have to know about actually what uh, you uh, basically the meaning of the copyright and how you will be able to check so now this standard is already implemented and you will be going to apply it so this is also essential part 4.4 defines that the instructional materials need to be current it is advised to utilize up-to-date discipline specific materials for example an introductory computer course may include information on recent trends in data storage or security. An English writing course might discuss the purpose of internet research. A chemistry course might include computerized models to demonstrate chemical operations. Or a human resource course may provide resources related to locating current and pending legislation. 4.5 recommends using a variety of instructional materials in the course. These may include textbooks and other publications, instructor creative resources, websites, and multimedia. Typically, a course should include multiple sources rather than material from a single author. As we do have uh, some of the courses, the online, and we have a very uh, strong impact of the e-learning and the online learning courses. So, so we do have to know about actually how many different material we have to use in our course design that is related to the, some of the textual. Of course, the base is your textbook. Then you have to add on the different things which make it a more engaging for the students to you have to add the more reflection references, you have to add the, some of the visual content, something which is related to the even in the education social media. So these all things make a one complete online learning course for the student to make them more engaged. So our purpose is basically to implement the things and give awareness uh, for the different things which make the student engage with the course. So you have to focus on these all things while you are just creating your outline of your course and while you are just designing or creating your course for the online and even for the graduate courses, like even for the uh, offline courses. So, so these all things are essential to make your course more visual, more interactive, and more engaging for the student. Okay, now let's move toward the fifth one, that is the learning activities and the learner interaction. Now we are going to talk about something, activities and the interaction of the students. So we have here the four points and all the points are the considerable because the three points are essential and the one point is very important. So let's have a look what is actually meaning of these all four standard. Welcome everyone to the next Quality Matters Standard tutorial. This brief video introduces the fifth Quality Matters Standard that focuses on course activities and learner interactions. Course activities are beneficial because they facilitate and support learner interaction and engagement. Course components that promote active learning contribute to the learning process and the learner's persistence. The fifth standard includes four components, three of which are essential, while the last one is very important. Next, let's look into the details of each component. 5.1 says that the learning activities should promote the achievement of the stated learning objectives or competencies. This reminds instructors of the so many times explained alignment process. The purpose of the learning activities is to facilitate the learner's achievement of the stated objectives set out in the course, module, or unit. In addition, the alignment with appropriate assessments, instructional materials, and utilize course technologies also assist learners to reach the learning objectives. An example of a proper alignment between objectives and activities is when the objective is that the learners deliver a persuasive speech and the course activities prepare them for the speech 
by requiring them to choose an appropriate topic, create an outline of what to include in the speech, and record a practice speech. If the objective is to deliver the same speech by the end of the course or module, but the activities do not include chances to practice that skill, then alignment does not exist between the objectives and the course activities. In short, course activities should provide opportunities to practice or build up a skill that must be learned by the end of the course. 5.2 states that the learning activities provide opportunities for interaction that support active learning. Active learning means that learners engage and do things such as discovering, processing, and applying concepts. Purposeful interactions may occur between the learner and the instructor, learner and content, and lastly, between individual learners. Interactions may vary based on the discipline, purpose, and the level of the course. The purpose of the interaction is more important than the number of opportunities for interactions. Activities for learner-instructor interaction may include a submitted assignment for which instructor feedback is provided, synchronous chatting, video conferencing, or an asynchronous discussion board exchange. For learner-content interaction, Assigned readings from a textbook, article, or online resource may be used. Completing a workbook or online exercise is another option. Activities for learner-learner interaction might include collaborative activities such as group discussions, small group projects, or peer critiques. Student-to-student -student interaction is not mandatory, but if it is appropriate, it can greatly add to the learning process. 5.3 describes that the instructor's plan for classroom response time and feedback on assignment is clearly stated. Frequent feedback from the instructor increases learner's sense of engagement. Learners need to know when they can expect the response to emails, discussion postings, feedback on assignments, and grades. This information typically appears in the syllabus. If the response time needs adjustment during the course, the change should be clearly communicated to the students. 5.4 says that the requirements for learner interaction are clearly stated. A clear explanation of the requirements for the learner interaction helps learners plan and manage their class participation and provides a basis for the instructor to evaluate learner participation. The more specifically the expectations are explained, the easier it is for the learner to meet the expectations. Typically, expectations are stated in the course information or syllabus. More specific, task-related performance expectations may be included in the individual task or assignment description. The instructor may also provide detailed rubrics to describe how learner interactions will be evaluated. So in the standard five, they explain about the interaction of the student with the different ways, like the student to instructor, student to online content, and the student to student interaction. Basically interaction and interactivity is a very important in a one course design because there is a best way to engage a student to give them a, some of the resources which will help him or her to interact with that content. Even is sit in a classroom or even sit in front of the screen, the interactivity is a basically a core thing for the digital transformation, I can say. Why? Because when we are talking about this, something digitally or something online learning, even though in the blended learning environment, you have to just something which is interact with the student to make him or her awake toward the content. And this is a basically a best practice to interact with the content to make them more engaged and get are uh, basically good outcomes. So uh, many studies um, uh, talk about it uh, because the interactivity is a core point to just uh, engage the student toward the content. 
Okay, let's move toward the course technology. Now we are going to about the technology. So we do have a four point again, and uh, we have the sub sub standards here. And for these are the four standards. So uh, I have to mention again, uh, the first two have the point three and three. That means it's essential. It's 14 hours. And uh, we have the last two points, uh, it gets the point of one. It means it's important. So let's have a look basically what is uh, standard six is and how we can explain it. Welcome to the next brief video in the Quality Matters series. This particular tutorial aims to introduce the sixth Quality Matters standard which turns attention to course technology. Course technologies support learners' achievement of course objectives or competencies. Appropriate technologies facilitate rather than impede the learning process. The sixth standard has five components. The first two are essential, the third is very important, while the last two fall within the important category. Next, let's look into the details. 6.1 states that the tools used in the course support the learning objectives and competencies. Here again, the importance of alignment appears as the tools selected for the course should align with the course and module level objectives, instructional materials, and learning activities. Tools are software that provide areas for integration in the course. They may be included in the learning management system such as Blackboard, or are external to the learning management system. A few examples with which most instructors are familiar are discussion boards, chat rooms, gradebook, social media, games, whiteboard, wikis, blogs, journals, virtual classrooms, and web conferencing. There are no specific tools that must be used in order for the standard to be met, but whatever tools are used, should support the learning objectives and activities in the course. In addition, clear instructions should be provided regarding how the tools support the learning objectives. 6.2 describes that course tools promote learner engagement and active learning, which simply means that tools should help learners to be actively engaged in the learning instead of just expected to passively absorb information. Effective tools facilitate interactions with the instructor, course materials, and other learners. Such tools may be interactive, real-time software, collaboration tools, webinars, virtual worlds, shared documents, wikis, animations, simulations, games, discussion tools, or automated self-check exercises that require learner responses. 6.3 says that technologies required in the course should be readily obtainable through downloading, purchasing in the bookstore, or other means. Technologies cover hardware, software, subscriptions, and plugins. If specific devices are needed for the course, instructions should be provided on how to obtain them. A selected software should be available on a variety of platforms, such as Windows, Mac operation system, or even mobile devices. Examples for software options are word processors, spreadsheets, presentation software, statistical analysis software, equation editor, web authoring tools, audio, video editing tools, or programming software. Instructors may indicate whether the software runs on PC or Mac, or what software options are available on mobile devices. When subscriptions are required, instructors should provide information on how to get access codes. To ensure learner access, provide the link to the required peripherals to be purchased, and for textbooks, CDs, and DVDs, information should be provided about the title, author, publisher, ISBN number, copyright date, and details on where copies can be obtained. 6.4 says that course technologies should be current. 
since new technologies continuously appear on the market, it is wise to confirm that the technology is up to date. Examples of current technology that can enhance learning include synchronous web conference tools for orientation, group projects, tutoring, test reviews, mobile applications, wikis for group collaboration, blogs for journals, simulations for demonstrating procedures and lab experiences, and web-based voice tools for practicing pronunciation and vocabulary knowledge for English as a second language learners. 6.5 describes that links are provided to privacy policies for all external tools required in the course. These policies are important when students are required to create an account with a username and password to access a tool. In these cases, learners may wish to read the policies to know how to safeguard their accounts. Now we are ready to review the main so this study was uh, related to the course technology. If as an instructor, still you are thinking you can work without technology. So there is a one big no. You can't now survive without technology, even just delivering your course, creating your course, designing any content. So your te technology is a very essential part now in this uh, era of the digital transformation era. You have to connect it with the technology. So you have to keep yourself up to date to create your content more engaging and more up to date for the students to meet the, actually the standards of the quality matters. So this is an essential part. So this standard is very important that is related to the course technology. So you have to understand all the steps and all the points are very essential to implement your course. So let's move toward next one that is a learner support that is the standard seven. Again, we do have a sub four sub standards and uh, we do have a different points. The first three have essential points. That is the point three and the uh, fourth one have a point one. That means this is an important one. So let's have to uh, look what is actually the meaning of these all standards and how we will be able to implement it. Hello everyone, this is the seventh video in the Quality Matters series. This particular brief video aims to explain the seventh QM standard, which highlights learner support. As you may have experienced, it is indeed very important for online learners to know that they have access to and are encouraged to use the available support services at the institution. Therefore, Courses should facilitate access to institutional support services essential to learner success. In this standard, four different kinds of support services are addressed. Technical, accessibility, academic services, and student services. Hence, standard seven has four components. The first two are essential, the third is very important, and the last one is important. Now we are ready to look into the details of each component. 7.1 says that the course instructions explain or link to a clear description of the available technical support. Such information may include how to log in, how to use the tools and features of the learning management system, and how to get help desk support. Such information may appear in the course under a specifically assigned content tab or in the syllabus. You can provide the link to the technical support website, a phone number or an email link to the help desk, or a link to the Indiana State Online Student Academic Support Services file to meet this standard. If you would like access to this comprehensive file, feel free to contact the instructional design team on campus. Providing links to tutorials or other recite instructions on how to use the tools and features in the system or other course technologies is also recommended. In case learners need to access external resources, such as publishers supplied online materials and activities, clearly worded directions can be provided on how to obtain support when needed. 
7.2 states that course instructions articulate or link to the institution's accessibility policies and services. To meet this standard, the applicable resources, such as the disability policy, can be included in the syllabus in a statement form, which would then contain the telephone number or link to the disability service office, or the resource can be linked in the Blackboard course. Again, a list of support services, accessibility policies, accommodation statements, and their contact information have already been compiled in the Indiana State Online Student and Academic Support Services file. If you would like to access this resource, please contact the instructional design team. Include, but are not limited to the contact information to library resources, testing services, math and writing centers, or citation sources. Again, all of these and other applicable resources have been included in the aforementioned file that could be linked in the course or listed in the syllabus. At the start of the session, I explain about the point of the accessibility and the support of the accessibility things that they are just journalized, make a standard for the accessibility, uh, but uh, they are also mentioned that if it's not met with your country and the state or local, so you can just consider uh, any specialist who is a uh, accessibility specialist according to your country, so you can follow up that standard to um, met uh, all the, these accessibility standards of your local or the country or related to your uh, area. So this is basically a one um, standardized uh, for the worldwide. So you just don't mess up with these things. Request access to it through the instructional design team. Continuing this pattern, 7.4 says, that the course instructions either articulate or link to the institution's student services and resources. Under this component, we think about contact information and resources related to advising, registration, financial aid, campus life, counseling, career services, and student organizations. Conveniently, the same file mentioned earlier contains all of these aspects. It is so you can see that these standards make uh, for not just for one of a quality member or a one course design, basically these all standards are implemented in or any of the higher education institute to make it a one complete standardized uh, environment to give them a one complete standardized environment. Uh, so these all the quality matters are important. I already explained that this is not just related to a faculty member or a student related to just a course design for the student. Students. This is basically built up a one complete educational institute system for the from the administrator level to the faculty member and the, all the members, uh, which is included to just implement the standards, rules, and these all kind of strategies. So this uh, very important for all of them to implement a one complete package of uh, standardized uh, educational system. Let's have a move towards to know about the eighth one that is accessibility and usability standard this is the eighth standard and again we do have uh, six sub standards in it and we do have some points uh, first three have the essential points and last three have the uh, number two point that mean it's uh, really important so these all are the considerable so let's have a look what actually the meaning and how we will be able to implement it and before going to know about this standard, I just want to again remind in this session that the accessibility and usability standards is designed journalized for the for the worldwide. And they are already explained that if it's not going to meet your country or area or state, you have to be just consider any accessibility specialist to uh, redesign your standards according to you. Hello everyone, here we are at the last brief video in the Quality Matters series. Standard 8 addresses the core concepts of accessibility and usability. 
With disabled students in mind, the course design reflects the commitment to accessibility so that all learners can access all course content as well as activities. Regarding usability, the goal is to create a course in which all learners can navigate easily and interact with course elements. Standard 8 has five components. The first two are essential, while the other three are very important. Let's now investigate the details. 8.1 says that course navigation facilitates ease of use. Navigation refers to the movement of the learner from one place to another in the online course. If it is planned well, navigation throughout the course will be consistent, logical, and efficient, which assists learner success. Consistent. They are talking about the navigation of the learning management system, uh, which we already using a one um, well uh, ranked uh, learning management system that is a Blackboard. And uh, now we are going to use the Blackboard Learn Ultra. Uh, so this uh, is a more uh, efficient and a more good feature. So they are just talking about this navigation about the learning management system. Layout for content, instructional materials, tools and media means that they are easily accessible from anywhere in the course. Repetitive design elements can increase intuitiveness. For example, if content for each module is organized in the same way in a folder system, students will have an easier way to find what they're looking for. Course pages can have links, files, and icons that are labeled with self-describing meaningful names. Icons that are links can also have additional accompanying text links. When tables are used to organize data, appropriate headers are needed. It is also advised to utilize heading styles in a page or document to illustrate the hierarchy of the material. In addition, a table of contents can be included that allows learners to move easily throughout the document. 8.2 explains that information is provided about the accessibility of all technologies required in the course. Learners with disabilities need access to information on the learning management system or other required technologies. To meet this component, include links to the accessibility statements for all required technologies, either in the course syllabus or on the Blackboard page where you list the required software or under the resources section. 8.3 describes that the course provides alternative means of access to course materials in formats that meet the needs of diverse learners. This statement refers to the non-text content that needs equivalent accurate textual representations. For example, a video or animation needs accurate captions or a text file that contains the transcripts for the video. Visual information such as images, graphs, and tables need to be described via an alt tag, long description, caption, or audio file. Tables need headings for columns and rows. PDFs that contain text should not be merely image scans. Instead, the text in the PDF file needs to be selectable and searchable. Colors alone should not be relied upon to convey meaning. Another way that does not require perceiving different colors should be added to aid the vision impaired. 8.4 focuses on course designs that facilitate readability. Here, distractions in the course should be minimized and the content should be clearly presented so that learners can easily read it and interpret it. Let's see some examples of strategies to facilitate readability. Similar content can be grouped together. Headings can indicate change of topic. Font style and size can be selected to maximize legibility. White spaces can be used appropriately to increase comprehension and reduce eye fatigue that occurs with large blocks of text. Text can be clearly distinguishable from the background with appropriate colors and sufficient contrast. And course materials 
should contain minimal spelling, grammar, or word choice errors. 8.5 examines whether course multimedia facilitate ease of use. Images, audio files, animation, videos, and interactive components need to be easy to use, understandable, and interoperational across devices. Here are some examples to consider. Graphics and animations can enhance materials without being distractive. Images should be appropriately sized and can be viewed in their entirety without scrolling. Audio quality should be clear. A video window can be resized and the resolution needs to be sufficient for comprehension. Longer videos than 15 to 20 minutes can be broken down into shorter segments and or can be searchable. And finally, movement through presentations can be controlled. It is now time to read. So this is all about the standard eight. So these are the, all the quality matters standards. We just explain it and we do have the 40, 42 specific substandards and we just go through all of them one, one by one and uh, just uh, explaining the actually what is the meaning and with the example how you will be able to to implement it so uh, one terminology already I um, just explained that was the rubric or standards you can say so you can also create the rubrics in Blackboard Learn Ultra for the assignment test and exam so this is a one complete session with us um, in, inshallah the future uh, coming weeks uh, so you have to connect it with us these all standards uh, today you learn you will going to implement it this is not just for the general information i already show up you that you have to uh, just open up uh, your learning management system and uh, then you have to log into your course and here is the option of the start here and you will be find a one complete one form is here available you have to add it, it fill up it and already mr shakil i'm explaining a very well a one complete session on it and i will also share the recording of that session with you guys and inshallah uh, we will just explaining the different uh, features of the blackwood ultra in the future coming uh, sessions so okay today is uh, a very important uh, training session uh, because this is uh, related to the standards and anything you are going to start uh, to just designing or creating a new things even though if we are talking about the course even though we, if we are talking about the standards and strategies for the uh, institute so these all things are very important and it's a uh, worldwide implemented quality matters hope I explained well and if you have any question and if you want me to repeat anything please let me know uh, you can just ask me anything thank you so much